them up against what's ahead of what's a big week. Yeah, they were touched yesterday. Obviously, they know what it means uh, to everybody that kind of game. Um, they felt disappointed because the the way the game went, they feel that they deserve it much more. But as well, that um, the reflection of the game is that we lost the game basically. But uh, they are ready. They know that the games that are they're coming up in the next uh, few days are massive for us uh, for the future of next season as well. And um, and they are willing to go and try again and, and put the same efforts and commitment. And obviously Liverpool on Wednesday, big game against the champions. But naturally, some fans are already looking towards the, the cup semi-final on Saturday against Man City. How will that game influence your selection for Wednesday? Uh, we have to go game by game. Uh, today we'll know more as well about um, how the players are recovered. Obviously, some players have had huge demand uh, since we joined the season and played a lot of minutes. And, and you can see that recovery-wise with the schedule that we have given again by the Premier League every two and a half days to play. But um, we will assess them today and tomorrow and put the players on the pitch that are in the best possible condition to compete and try to win the game again. Thanks, Mikhail. Thank you. Hi, Mikhail. Uh, Gary, ain't it Sky? Hi there. Hi, Mikhail. I oh. hope you're well. Yeah. Um, can I just pick up with areas which, are, you know, it's going to come as no surprise to you areas of concern in terms of the defensive frailties. Um, how difficult is it to, to try and get a short-term fix on measures like defensive frailties? As you say, you've got games that literally coming every few days. It's obviously an area of concern. How challenging is it, is it to try and shore up defensive uh, sort of uh, frailties? Well, it's a collective game, but obviously within that collective game, there is a lot of individual games that happens and a lot of sequencing throughout the 90, 95 minutes that we play. Individual errors are part of football. You can make them and they can go unnoticed if, if something doesn't happen. And obviously when those finish in, in a goal, the highlight goes there. I'm not concerned about that. That was something that we will short obviously short term is more difficult to do it is but what happens after you make an individual error how you react to that how you keep trying and your mindset to keep continuing the game to try to put that one back and try to resolve the situation and win it and it's not just the player that makes the individual error but the rest how to react to to try to help the player who has done it but um yes we got punished big time the other day with that and uh, we have to learn and, um, and you know that teams are respecting that sometimes as well, and we cannot give them anything. Mikel, there are dis discussions going on with, with government and Premier League and, and maybe even clubs about the potential return of, of supporters to stadiums in however they, they may choose to do it. Um, given now you've had about half a dozen games with, with, with no crowds, can you give a sense of what it really is like in an empty stadium? Um, and perhaps how it may help if and when supporters can come back in? A different game. I would name it like this. Uh, the crowd affects many situations. The, the crowd doesn't allow the team that is playing at home to have certain behaviours during the game. Because it doesn't. He's asking all the time, he's demanding the, the home team to act in a certain way. He puts pressure on players uh, when they have the ball, when they don't have the ball. And as well, it gives a different energy um, to the whole game. Um, the passion, the moments before the game, when you are in the warm-up, is a, is a completely different game. And hopefully we can have them back, obviously, with a very safe environment for them. And I understand that it's going to be a slow process again, but uh, hopefully we'll get there. Uh, Mikhail, finally from me, just wondering if it's sort of a, a reaction from me from you with the decision yesterday from Cass on Manchester City, and maybe a wider question for all when it comes to financial fair play going forward, given the last four months with coronavirus and sort of bringing clubs slightly closer, just your, your feelings on, on FFP, given what happened yesterday? Well, then there's no question about what happens. They completely deserve to be in Champions League because what they've done on the pitch is unquestionable. 
and then the regulators have looked at it and have decided that they haven't done anything wrong. So you have the two aspects that are really clear and transparent and they're going to be in Champions League because they deserve for what they do in the pitch and what they do outside the pitch. Thanks, Mikhail. Thank you. Sam at Premier League. Hi there, Mikhail. Hope you're well. Um, if I may go back to the, uh, the game at the weekend. 76% possession for your side in the second half. When you look back at that match and the stats that go along with it, is that something which pleases you or is it immaterial if the scoreline isn't in your favour? No, I'm not too concerned about the possession. Is how we attack the opponent's box, how we generate situations to score goals, the dominance, how quick we regain the ball, how close we do it next to the opponent's goal. Obviously, it tells you how far we've come to be able to do that in, a, in an away ground against uh, one of the biggest rivals. Um, it shows the personality of what the team wants to do. And it's going to be a big part of our identity, but we're going to finish that having produced the three points and the security that uh, we can control and dominate the games against any opponent. I guess with that identity in mind, you've been at the club just over half a year now. When you look ahead to the Liverpool match and Jurgen Klopp, is that the staple, the model in terms of building a club and the way a manager is essentially taken aside from around sort of sixth, seventh position and, and taken them to, of course, winning the Premier League and, and Champions League? Yeah, what they've done, it's, it's phenomenal. Obviously, the first two years, they took them some time to rebuild the squad and to create again a new culture a new philosophy and, and a game model that suited the coach. And then they started to recruit every single play in relation to what they needed. And that's where I think they were really smart because they bought a specificity for every position that was required to get strength. Obviously, financially, they had a big backing and made some big, big signings, which completely changed the club, in my opinion. And just finally from me, they're of course chasing the, the Premier League points record still, not the result that they would have wanted the other day. Does that change your approach to the game, knowing that they will still be coming out fighting for something? 100%. And if you look at the last game, the way they've played and the lineups that they are putting there, you can tell that they are coming here with full commitment and trying to win the point. Um, the result that they had at City... Um, as well, when you look back the game, it could have been completely different. And um, you cannot question the attitude or the energy of that team in any game or any minute or any game. That's probably one of the non-negotiables that they have. And you can see that in, in every game. Thanks, Mikael. Thank you. George at the Beeb. Mikael. Um, I was just wondering, when Jürgen took over at Liverpool, you were still playing for Arsenal. Is it your job you've got a bit similar to what he's had to do in four years? You've got a similar sort of rebuild. Liverpool were drifting a bit and you've got to do a similar thing to get Arsenal back to where they are. Four years' time and we both are sitting here and I tell you, yes, we've done it. I will be so happy. But uh, I know how many decisions have to be right, how much support you need from the club and the people around, how much connection you have to generate with all your fans to have the full package. And afterwards, it's football, you know, and the context right now is different to what it was as well four years ago and the abilities for a club to rebuild something are more limited. But certainly, it's something that we have to look at how they did it because uh, it's a great example. But we have to know that we have to do it our way with our resources and having in mind that the context right now is, is different. But um, we are heading to be the best. And that's my only objective with this club. And, and we have to find a way to do it. It will, the potential without European football, which is a possibility, I know you've got the FA Cup, but how much could that hinder your finances and your ability to bring the players you need in to make Arsenal better? European football gives you more financial resources and that is clear. We're going to keep trying to the end of the season to try to achieve that, obviously. And after that, we will assess where we are, what's our capability to, 
to recruit, to maintain the players that we have, to maintain the structure that we have in place at the moment at the club and move forward from there. And in, in light of that and the, the game against City on Saturday night, is there potentially you could rest some players tomorrow to save them for the match against Man City or will you put out a full strength side? Well, I believe that uh, it's very important to have the right momentum and energy to get into important matches. And in order to do that, you have to go game by game. Uh, today and tomorrow, we'll assess the player how they are. Obviously, they've been hit. A lot of them, they played some crazy minutes up to now. And we're going to have, again, games every two and a half days. So we will try to put the strongest team as possible here and as well on Saturday. And to do that, we need to know how everybody recovers from, from the game. Thank you. Thank you. Ian at TalkSport. Hi, Michael. How are you doing? You right? Yeah. Emmy um, Martinez has been brilliant since coming into the team and made a couple of fantastic saves in your win over Norwich. And obviously the other day, pulled out some, some top saves as well, notably the one from Ben Davis. Um, has it been a surprise to you how well he's done? And is it giving you a bit of a question mark now about whether Bernd Leno, when fit, be it this season or next season, walked straight back into the team? Well, in terms of uh, Emmy's character and uh, goalkeeping ability, I didn't have any question mark. Um, the way he trains every day, the way he behaves, and has behaved since uh, he's been at the club, he's been phenomenal. It was a question mark, obviously, how he's going to do it because he didn't have any Premier League experience and how he can deal with that game after game. And he's shown that um, he's more than ready to do it. Um, he's earned his place now. He's playing really well. He's playing with a lot of confidence as well. And in key moments, he's been really helpful. He needs to continue to do that. This is a marathon. It's a long run. A football club like this demands every day to be at that level, and that's what uh, he needs to keep going. You mentioned before playing every two, two and a half days or three days. I, I get the impression you feel that maybe Arsenal could have been given a, a little bit more of gap between the matches. But no, we played eleven games and we only had advantage in one, which was against the Spurs. The rest, all the teams had at least twenty-four, thirty-six, or forty-eight hours more than us. But look at the boys. They keep going. They go full gas. It doesn't matter. And we will do it again. And uh, we cannot complain because it doesn't matter. We're not going to change it. The fixtures are already there. So we will keep going and try our best. Finally from me, um, it's like a double-pronged question. Firstly, with, with your front three of Lacazette, Aubameyang and, and Pepe or, or Saka, whoever plays, Liverpool's front three of Firmino, Salah and Mane, I'm not expecting tomorrow night to be nil-nil, are you? Um, and obviously, as Mr. Earl is not playing tomorrow night, am I expecting him to play again this season? Well, I don't know what kind of game. Obviously, when you look at the front players that, uh, that you just mentioned, obviously, goals are there, but football is so unpredictable. We see, we, we try to keep in L in our side and score as many as we can. That's all we can do. And mess it? The mess with the situation is still the same as it was. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nick from Haters. Hi, Mikel. Yeah, just, just staying on Liverpool and this sort of what we've discussed about almost like a four-year plan, you said the situation has changed. Is it realistic with your resources and the situation that Arsenal can be challenging for the title again in four years' time? I don't know. To talk about four years in football, it's, um, it's almost impossible. You have to see a trend and you have to see movement and you have to see that the direction you are taking is the right one and you are making progress um, all the time. At the end of the season, we're going to have to assess where we are in all terms at the club, what's the ambition and where we want to head in. And in order to do that, whether the ambition and the level is equal or is not realistic or is more than realistic. And uh, that's what we have to get a deal on. And, and talking about their recruitment, obviously one player they signed was a former teammate of yours, I believe, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Um, looking at his situation now and the success he's had, do you wish Arsenal did more to keep him? And do you think he's been totally justified in making that move away from Arsenal? 
Well, it's easy to say that right now, but uh, the moment you have to understand all the circumstances, I don't know what Alex wanted to do in his career at the time, um, the situation with the club, how the negotiation where I don't have all the information to value that. We all could see the potential of Alex, um, where he could develop. He picked uh, an incredible club, obviously, to move. Um, he wanted a challenge probably after so many years here. You have to accept that, and um, I think we all wish him the best because as well as a great player, I think he was someone that was really, really liked amongst the, the fans, the staff and players. Well, just, just finally, from, from me, you've made it clear that Mezzet's not in available for this game. But as Ian was saying, you know, fans keep asking, has he got any chance of playing again this season, from what you know? I don't know. At the moment, the situation remains the same and um, we will see if that changes.